Hello and welcome back to this channel. So for today's tutorial, we're going to go back to Adobe Illustrator and design a seamless pattern um, that looks something like this. So I guess let's just get started. So first I'm going to go ahead and open my Adobe Illustrator and let's go to file and new. You could create any file size. It really doesn't matter. But I think I'm going to go with six into six inches to start off. Make sure you choose RGB if you're planning to have it on a screen. If you're going for a print, it should be CMYK. And let's keep the raster effects at 150 PPI just so that we can control the file size and click on create. The first thing we're going to do is create the base pattern. But before that, let me bring in all the colors. Don't worry, I'm going to share all the colors in the description box below. You can go ahead and pick it up from there. Okay, so I have all my colors here. So by the way, if you want to pick up some color, just go ahead and you get the hex code and you can just double click here. And here you'll have an option to input your hex code and that's how you can use all the color codes that I provide. So let's make the element for the pattern first. By the way, if you don't see the menu like this here and if you think that some of these things are missing, that's because the way your workspace is designed. If you go up here, you see something called as Essentials Classic. There's a drop down menu here and there are different things that you can use. For example, if you click on Typography, it's going to change the menu completely and it's not going to show up everything that you would see when you put it in Essentials Classic. So I always ask people to change it to Essentials Classic so that they can see a lot more menu options and utilize it in their artboard. You can start choosing these particular things when you know exactly what you need. For example, if you click on painting, you wouldn't need any more than these options right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and right click on the rectangle tool and click on the polygon tool. Now click, hold your shift key down and drag to make a polygon. So by the way, this size is not really mandatory. You can change the size later because we are going to modify it once we have our final element ready. And remember, this is Illustrator, so everything is going to be a vector and it does not matter if you decrease the size or increase the size. It's not going to damage the quality like it would in Photoshop or some other raster program. Okay, so now it has a fill of white, but we don't need a fill, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on None. And for Stroke, I'm just going to go ahead and pick this color, but I'll just press I, it'll go to fill and then just switch it so that we have some color and we can see the hexagon here. All right, so now we have a stroke for this, but I want it to be a little thicker. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on stroke. So if you do not see stroke here, it's under window. And then if you scroll down, you'll see something called a stroke. So if you don't have these options here, or I might point out to a different things like Pathfinder and layers and stuff like that, or libraries, you'll find everything under the window option. So everything on the right side of the screen, you will find under window. Even the things like transform or, you know, align is under window. So it's basically you go ahead and select it. So I might not mention that you have to find something under window, but you know when I click something here, if you don't have it on your screen, just go ahead and find it under window option. For stroke, we're going to go ahead and give something bigger, maybe 20, a little bigger probably. I think I'll give it 30. So 30 should be fine. And we're going to keep everything like that and just close this up. And now click on your stroke, go to object, path, outline stroke. And this is going to make it into a shape. Yeah, that's right. It's a shape now and that's perfect. We want exactly that. And now it's time to cut the shape up. I'm just going to bring in the final element that we want to create so that you have a side by side comparison of what we are trying to achieve. Okay, so as you see, this is what we want to achieve, but I'm going to start off with a really huge hexagon so that you guys can see it. As you can see, I've rotated this hexagon. So we're going to do exactly that. Go to your selection tool or press V on your keyboard. Click on this. And you see this rotate option and slightly drag it so that it's about like this. And now we're going to go ahead and slice it into pieces. Go to your line segment tool. If you cannot see it, right click and line segment tool. And let's click on this point and click here again. Do the same thing here as well. And here as well. It's okay if the line segment does not have a stroke color because we don't really need it. Press V on your keyboard to go back to selection tool, click and select everything and go to your pathfinder and let's click on divide. When you click on divide, it divides it into different pieces, but the only thing is they'll be grouped together. So you won't see that. So press command or control shift and G to ungroup everything. Now each is a different piece. 
Let's go ahead and color it. We're going to retain this color. For this one, let's press I on your keyboard and let's keep this color. And for this one, if you want to switch between eyedropper and the selection tool, hold your command or control and then it switches to your selection tool. And when you release your command or control, it becomes the eyedropper again. And let's give this color. This looks good, so I'm going to click and select everything. Meanwhile, I'm also going to make a copy of it. Press your option or Alt key down, click and drag and create a copy and keep it in corner because we're going to use it later to uh, figure out the size and stuff like that. So let's keep it on the side. So now since they're all separated out, we need to group them. So click and select everything. Command or Control G to group it together. And now we're going to go ahead and make some modifications. So click on this, hold your option or Alt key down, click, hold Shift and drag it so that it goes and snaps like this. So if you don't have this snap function on, or if you don't have these pink lines visible, go to view and make sure you click on smart guides. And also there's an option, option called as snap to point. Make sure you click it on as well so that it becomes very easy to you know uh, work with these things. So now let's hold your option or alt key down, click, and then move this so that it comes and coincides somewhere like this exactly like this. Now click on this one again, option Alt key down, click, hold your shift key down and move it so that it goes and snaps and sits like this. So by the way, when you're doing this, make sure that you don't have any spaces. Uh, for example, I have here and I think that's because I didn't make my origin hexagon pretty nice and neat, but that's okay. Um, happens all the time. So, but I need to move this so that it snaps right here like that. So should be fine. Let's make this up a little bit like that. Okay. Our pattern is going to be a little messed up, but that's okay. Now click and select everything. And we're going to make a copy of this as well. And don't ask me why. It's always better to keep a copy around so that uh, even if you mess things up, you can go back and edit it. So let's select everything. And uh, we have to ungroup this because we need to delete some things off. So command shift and G and it ungroups everything and now click and let's just delete. Now it's time to go ahead and create the rest of the pattern. So to do that, you see there's a hexagon here, which is, let me go ahead and try to get that. All right, there's a hexagon there, which is like the complete size of this. So let's go ahead and do that. So now go back to your hexagon tool and click and drag and hold your option key down so that it creates this hexagon from the center. I'm just going to eyeball it and then twist it so that it sits like this. And now come here, hold your option key down. Don't forget that, hold your shift key down and you can increase this so that it matches the original hexagon. So now we're gonna create a copy of this. So click on this, hold your option or alt key down, click and drag to make a copy. Let's just keep it somewhere here. And now we have to send this to back. So command or control shift and open square bracket and it goes to back. That's perfect. Now let's bring this and keep it on top like this and click, hold your option key down, shift key down and reduce in size till you feel like it matches what you need. We could make it a little smaller if you're getting very confused, make sure you go ahead and uh, select the yellow. Any yellow is okay, so that should be fine. So I think this shape would be fine. So I'm just going to quickly drag this out here. And now we're gonna do the same thing that we did uh, using line segments to divide the thing. So let's go ahead and click on the line segment and you always get your center, that's for sure. But we should be out of this. So press command or control and click outside. And now release your command or control and then you can see your center. Click and drag and reach this point. And then again click and drag and reach this point. Click and drag and reach this point. So now press V on your keyboard to go back to selection tool. Click and select everything. Oops, not this. Don't select that. Click and select these things. And go to your pathfinder and click on divide again. And we'll ungroup it. Command, control and G. So now it's like each tiny piece and we're going to give it a different color. So let's go to this one and let's give this a little lighter or maybe the lightest. And over here, let's give it a little lighter than the base color. 
we have this ready i'm going to group it because i don't want to move it uh -huh. don't select that click and select only these and command g to group them and let's go ahead and place it here right in the center and hold your command or control and open square bracket to keep sending it one step back like this and you know exactly where to send it you might have to press the key a few times to make sure that you have reached that particular goal of where you want the element to be okay i think our base element is ready and this is exactly how it looks like so i'm just going to click and select everything don't forget to group it that is command g and then hold your shift key down click and let's reduce this in size because we don't want it too big then our pattern is also going to be pretty big which is not something that we need okay now that we have a base element ready it's time to make it into a pattern so go to object pattern make i have multiple tutorials on how to create a seamless pattern so i'm not going to go into complete detail but i'll show you exactly how i do here you can always go ahead and experiment with these things over here depending on the pattern that you have but right now we have this so i think i'll go by brick by row it does not matter brick by row or brick by column because the pattern is pretty similar everywhere and click on this pattern tile tool just gonna scroll in so that you can see it and our goal is to make sure that all the elements fit snugly next to each other something like this there's a gap here so we need to move that and it seems to fit nice and once you're done with this click on done okay now it's time to test our pattern so i'm just going to go to you can choose anything polygon is fine as well so select a polygon like this and let's go to swatches again window swatches and it's always here in the corner in the bottom just click on that and you have your seamless pattern ready and once you're ready with everything like if you want to export this you can create a separate artboard here click on the artboard icon and click and drag to make it as big as you want you can see the height and width here in the corner so you know how exactly how big that is and once you're done click on the selection tool and now you can go to your rectangle tool if you want it in a rectangle tool pattern so click and select everything and then it'll automatically select it because we just used it if not you can go ahead and uh, select it from the swatches as well so once you have this you can go to file export and export as and in here give it as png and click on use artboard one thing you should do that is when you click on this it exports all the artboard in that file for example if i click on export here and then you go to 150 ppi and you obviously can give anything you want transparent or white or something we can change it and click on ok and now if you go to your folder you can see that it has even exported the other artboard that we had so basically you'll get all the artboards will get exported and uh, if that's what you want it's okay otherwise you can always create a new file and copy the swatch over there and then get this pattern okay so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and i hope you liked it if you did please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel oh by the way turn on the notifications because you'll get notified every time i post a new video it feels like a lot of people miss out on videos because they don't have the notification turned on but i would also like to say that i post every tuesday so you'll definitely find it if you like illustrator i have this uh, class on skillshare where you can draw a very cute character in adobe illustrator if you're interested check it out if you don't have a premium access to skillshare don't worry i've got you covered there's two months free skillshare access to anybody who signs up using that link you can find it in the description box below as well so i guess i'll see you in the next video then have fun create something nice and if you do create something share it with me you can find me on instagram at print me some color i'll see you in the next video bye bye